So we're here today to talk about nozzle selection and pressure. And in weed management, herbicide recommendations are only as good as the application with which that they go out. Um, so we want to balance our chemistry with the deployment of the best application technology. And I'm here today with Dave Fickle from the Agco Corporation to talk about nozzle selection firstly. So Dave, tell us a little bit about nozzle selection. Nozzle selection is critical. I think we all know that, um, especially with the, with the herbicide application, right? So those nozzles are very representative of the engineering controls that have been designed into these machines, right? We've got all this technology. We want to make sure that right at the very end, we get that application right. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the easiest thing is, is to start, you know, with what we're going to be spraying, right? What's, what's the, the product? Um, and then we want to look at our speed and our pressure, right? Everybody knows that speed and pressure drive a lot of what uh, tip we need to, you know, nozzle we need to select. So that's always the big thing. Those have a lot of impacts. For Liberty Herbicide, uh, the link to the proper nozzle is key. Uh, that's, go that's going to drive the efficacy. And for optimal Liberty Herbicide applications, targeting droplets in the medium to coarse droplet size spectrum is right where we want to be. And so for demonstration purposes today, we've sprayed some paper plates with a blue dye to mimic uh, spray deposition patterns of a couple different nozzles. And so we compared the TT nozzle, which is what we would recommend for a Liberty herbicide application, to a TTI nozzle, which produces those larger ultra coarse droplets for auxinic herbicides uh, like, like dicamba. And so what we observed are smaller droplets more and more uniform coverage out of those TT nozzles versus the TTI nozzles, which were larger and gave us a little bit less uh, coverage. And with Liberty being a contact herbicide, that coverage is key. There's some misconceptions out there about how increasing pressure forces more product into the canopy. And you know, that's just not true. And you know, with an increase in pressure, yes, you get an increase in velocity of the droplets that are leaving the nozzle orifice, and they also make more fine sized droplets. But if we drive that pressure too high, we're looking at droplets that are moving off target or evaporating before they reach the target. So those are two consequences we just don't wanna to have to live with. So instead of increasing that pressure, an applicator has a couple of options and kind of that, that lead recommendation would be increase your spray volume gallonage uh, and then make corrections to your nozzle to ensure that you're still getting that medium to coarse droplet spectrum that's ideal for Liberty herbicide applications. We look at the sprayers, conventional sprayers that they're on the market today, and a lot of them have, you know, we, we, we push product from the, from the center out, right? So you're gonna get a big pressure drop here, uh, maybe as much as eight to 10 PSI across just two nozzles, right? And that's huge. Um, if, if the pressure is too high, like you said, we might have issues with drift. Uh, that's not what we want. Maybe the pressure is too low on, on one side of the boom, uh, and that creates other issues. Uh, so that's, that's a big thing we want to watch for. And we all know as speed goes up, the pressure needs to come up as well um, to keep uh, everything you know, even across the boom. All great points, and it's exciting to see that the chemical industry and the ag equipment industry are both trying to tackle this problem. So. And again today, we, we uh, conducted another demonstration on uh, paper plates, again, with that, that blue dye, and compared the TT nozzle, which produces those medium to coarse droplets for Liberty, optimal Liberty herbicide applications, and delivered it at 15 GPA, but the difference, we were comparing 20 PSI to 50 PSI. And we observed some smaller droplets um, with the same nozzle and, and higher pressure. Uh, so with that, that 50 PSI really increasing kind of the, the shear of droplets and increasing the number of droplets. Um, so just to kind of wrap this all up, you know, don't forget about your nozzle selection and your pressure. Um, there's some definite factors to be cognizant of as you make those decisions. So we can't forget about nozzle selection. We can't forget about operating pressures. Those are very, two very important factors in making sure that you get an ideal application with Liberty Herbicide. For more information about Liberty Herbicide, contact your local area BASF representative or go to yourliberty-herbicide.com.